Rohab Taqwa, it is in the context that he has created us to obey him. And then also the next word, verse is from Surah Al-Baqarah, which Ramadan is coming and we are fasting, Alhamdulillah, for all these years. But here, why we are fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defining, O oh believer, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you learn self-restraint. Here is taqwa is translated as self-restraint. And first verse which every khatib recites from in khutbah, Ya ayyuhal lazina aman taqullaha khat wa khatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. This is the tradition. And again, here the Mufassirin has translated taqwa as fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same word is being translated in many different ways. Many, it has several meanings. And the next one, if you say, inna akramakum min dallahi adhaakum, this is a very small portion of the ayah from Surah uh, Hujrat, uh, ayah 49. I don't think I can go into the detail, or else I recommend, I urge you to read the tafasir about these few verses, so we, myself and yourself, will become clear on it. And this is very important because here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, saying that among you, the best, the noblest of you is the, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the most righteous, who is most muttaqi. Here, the judgment point, how Allah subhanahu wa is starting to judge me and you and all, is based on taqwa. Inna akramanukum in the lahi atqaqum. I hope uh, by the end of uh, this khutbah you will remember this small verse and try to see how we can uh, put that into the practice. As you know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given the message over revealed Quran for 23 years and it was given at different times. But this particular verse in Surah Al-Hujrat was revealed in the last portion of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where a specific instruction was revealed during different times in his final life of the Prophet so people can understand and follow that. Now if we look at the meaning of taqwa, basically it is given in three, four meanings all along. One is fear of Allah. At the same time, in some ayahs, it is Mufassirin has translated as love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same word, love, and the second is fear. And the another one is, third one is consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Mufassirin has said that. Allah, you have to be conscious about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First is fear of Allah, love of Allah, and the consciousness of Allah. These are the basic meanings which is being translated in, during all this. 251 times this word is used in the Quran in different contexts. And then it is not only us, but at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sahaba also wanted to know what is the importance? What is taqwa? So here it is reported in Sahih Bukhari and also according to the tafsir of Ibn Kasir, the root meaning of taqwa is to avoid what one dislikes. It was reported that Umar bin Khattab ta'ala anhu asked Ubay bin Kaab ta'ala anhu about taqwa. Ubay said, have you ever walked on the path that has thrown on it? Umar said, yes. Ubay asked, what did you do then? To which Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied, I rolled up my sleeves and struggled. Ubay said, that is taqwa. To protect oneself from sin through the life, life's dangerous journey so that we can successfully complete the journey untouched, unscratched by the sins of this world. That is how the Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu explained to Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala what is taqwa is. And again, if we look at the beginning of the Quran, 
in the beginning alif lam mim zalik al kitab la rayba fi hudal lil muttaqin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying first few verses itself that i'm revealing this verse quran is for those who are muttaqin so you can ben- benefit follow and be successful in hereafter ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he is commenting on these verses he says that this is a guidance for the muttaqin what is that means that means according to ibn abbas they are the believers who avoid shirk with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who work in his obedience he also said that al muttaqin means those who fear allah's punishment which would result if they abandon the true guidance they recognize and know they are also hope in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercies and believing in what he revealed so if you look at it uh, ibn abbas translating muttaqin in so many different ways so let's look a little bit more about it what do we mean by fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in the first verse the translation is fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala god fearing is in the context of islam what is taqwa or god fearing in the context of islam here fear does not means scaring things here which can be without love or respect if fear associated with the scare it is a scary thing and it is not associated with love what we are fearing in this taqwa is fear of the punishment of allah on the day of judgment that's what fear means here fear of losing the blessing of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives fear and afraid of displeasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is most worthy of love then that's what fear means then the next translation which was given was god consciousness what do we mean by god consciousness as the element of taqwa is the important concept most conscious of displeasing of allah any time that is what consciousness is tawakkul ala allah and presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all the time like he is watching me every time whatever i'm doing he is watching me so if that is the consciousness all the time there will not be any of these killings and all these crimes so that is what consciousness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the third meaning which is given as love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for taqwa is love for necessary dependence on any human being to understand this dependence one has to relate like a baby is dependent on the mother especially when it's young so our dependence to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so much that we cannot do anything without allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that's what the uh, here is the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mercy like the mother has a mercy towards the baby so here taqwa implying that the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mufassirin says that the true love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifested in pure act of worship and following his path and if necessary sacrifice personal desires time wealth for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the test for a person who is a muttaqi that we know that some of the sin uh, is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken bought our life and our wealth for the jannah in the hereafter so if that is the concept so then it is very important that we love allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to an extent that we are willing to sacrifice our desires our time our wealth for his sake the fourth way it is translated taqwa is nourishing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's consciousness love love of allah how do you nourish the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in god consciousness 
the way it is described in several uh, tafsir and also uh, commentaries is constantly remembering or saying astaghfirullah whenever we are doing it whether we are driving whether we are going anywhere or, so it's tasbih remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala astaghfirullah is constantly remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and engage in self purification and the third thing in the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a charity do regular charity and when we are talking about charity again in the quran it says lan tanalu birra hatta tunfiqu mimma tuhibbun again here is if you want the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to sacrifice or give what you love the most here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying you can never attain righteousness unless you spend in the cause of allah ta'ala that you could that you cherish dearly which is the thing which you like the most and also when we're talking about god consciousness or tawakkul ala allah here several tafsir has given the example of tawakkul example of ibrahim alayhi salam khalilullah and they talk about four elements one is when you're talking about tawakkul ala allah first you must have a trust complete trust in him and then you will be tested about it just like i don't have the time to go into the details of the story of ibrahim alayhi salam we all know that how he was tested when he was ready to sacrifice his son that was a test first is test trust test and third is obedience hazrat ibrahim alayhi salam was ready to sacrifice his son in the obedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and third one is fourth one is sacrifice trust test obedience sacrifice this is the story of ibrahim alayhi salam showing to all the religions that tawakkul ala allah what it means and then when we are talking about god consciousness is staying steadfast la ghalib ala allah he is the one who has the power of over everything and god consciousness require us to act with peace and justice salam i am i with peace with myself with my family with my friends with my community peace adal then justice we have to be just with everybody in all our actions and lastly to wash things that keep away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the things which we should stay away to attain the taqwa or the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right context again it is no reported that we should avoid aggression completely corruption and mischief ungratefulness a person who has a taqwa he never be ungrateful for those who have given him the help or whatever it is help from any source and i have to watchful of rejection of faith people go to the point that shirk and rejection a, per, a person these two things cannot be together a muttaqi person have this the next one is betrayal betrayal is you understand wada khilafi are you promise something you never fulfill the promise how often we say we will do this and that we just completely ignore it in a matter of fact quran has revealed the ayah in surah al mu'minun allazina hum fi li amanatihim wa ahdihim raun those 
who has the iman, who has the taqwa, they fulfill their promises and and do not waste things. This is another thing. A Muslim cannot be wasteful. Resources which are so meager, like we don't even think of wasting the food or water. In India, people don't have um, a bucket of water. They have to while, go miles. And yet, we stay in the shower and run the water like nothing is happening. They're wasting food, time, all these things. We should be, because these are the amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us. And we have to be very careful. Our environment and then arrogance. A person who has a taqwa, he cannot be arrogant. So these are some of the things we have to watch. And inshallah, we'll finish. May Allah guide us to have fear of Allah and taqwa in our lives. And Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Salatu Ala Rasulih Al Ameen, Amma Baat, Fayam Ashar Al Muslimin, Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Khala Allahu Ta'ala Fi Kitabi Hil Kareem, Inna Allaha. وَمَلَائِكَتُهُ يَسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صلِّ على سيدنا مولانا محمد بعدد من صلى وسام اللهم صلِّ على سيدنا مولانا محمد بعدد من خاد وخام اللهم صلِّ على جامع الأنبياء المرسلين وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين وعلى عبادك الصالحين اللهم أيد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وجعلنا منهم وقد من قدر دين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباع ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ثبتنا على الاسلام اللهم ثبتنا على الاسلام اللهم نبر قلوبنا بنور الايمان اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنين